The question that was emailed in today for uh, today's Bloodhound workshop is this Bill Williams alligator system. You know, on the surface, this kind of looks like a, a you know your a standard three moving average ribbon kind of system. However, the one thing that sets it apart, um, both setting it up on the chart, right, but also setting it up in Bloodhound, is that each of the SMAs is shifted a few bars. So if you're not familiar with the, the Bill Williams alligator system, we have a SMA5 that's shifted three bars into the future, right, an SMA8 shifted five bars, and an SMA 13 shifted eight bars, right? So when you put this up on the chart, right, you get your plot lines, your, your moving average lines, right, shifted forward, you know, past the bar, you know, the bars that's actually building, right? And just in case, you know, if you're not familiar on how to do this within NinjaTrader, you know, you really, First of all, you should go watch Ninja Traders training videos on charting, first of all. But just to give you guys, you know, a quick look here, right? So here's my three moving averages. And the displacement function is what's used to shift a, a an indicator forward in time. So the SMA5 right is shifted or displaced three bars into the future there right and um so like i said uh, previously the system's pretty standard you're just looking for the moving averages to be all lined up you know in the correct order you know the faster moving you know either uh, at the bottom or top the middle moving in the middle and the slower moving you know, either at the top or at the bottom, right? So, and that defines the alligator's mouth, you know, being open when the SMAs are in line with each other, right? So, uh, so for a long, so for the alligator's mouth to be open long, right? You want the SMA5 above the SMA8, and then the SMA8 being above the SMA13, right? And of course, the opposite um, for a short situation. Right. So again, what makes this unique is that everything shifted forward in time, right? So how do we do that within Bloodhound? And that's kind of what today's uh, lesson is really all about, because there are um, prior videos that show you how to build a system that identifies when you have X number of moving averages all lined up, you know, in, in the correct order. So, all right, so let's get Bloodhound open and start building here. So, all right, let's put in today's workshop date. And so, let's see. Yeah, there you can see I was kind of practicing um, myself. So, even I wasn't sure exactly how to do this right off the bat. Um, and of course, that is what highly illustrates, you know, the, the beauty of... Uh, Bloodhound. All right, so all right, so there's today's workshop date. So we have a file name, you know, created there. So now all of our work can get saved to this file, and we won't lose it. Next, let's work on the logic tab here, and we'll make a logic uh, template <clears throat> to put this system into. And how about if I just copy that, keep it simple, and I'll just shorten it up a little bit. All right. And um, yeah, one thing you gotta keep doing with Ninja Traders, shifting, pulling your chart backwards so you can see, right, your your plot lines that are shifted into the future there. So, all right, so this is just a simple comparison, right? We want to check when the fast moving average is above or below the medium moving average, right? So as rule number one states here, right, to define the lips of the alligator, as Mr. Williams calls it, right? The green uh, is, right? The green line is the SMA5, right? And we need to make sure that the lips are above the teeth 
for a long, right? Or the lips are below the teeth for a long. So we want the green above or below the red, right? And so to do that, we're gonna use a comparison solver, right? We're comparing the SMA5 to the SMA8. All right, so now let's just change the periods of the SMAs there, right? So let's open that up. And we can just go in there and switch that to a five. And then go down to input B, switch that to eight there. Now, you know, the first instinct is, okay, let's just change the displacement to match exactly what we have on the chart. And normally that would be correct, you know, right? So if we do that, let's change the displacements here, right? Like so. All right, so the five is shifted three bars and the SMA eight is shifted five bars, right? So let me add, yeah, let me add something extra here to help us out. So um, actually, let me close Bloodhound first. So All right, so I put dots on top of the line there. <clears throat> so that way we can kind of count, you know, how many bars or not how many bars, but how many data points forward, you know, things have been shifted here. So uh, let's take a look here. Um, oh, let's get this back. Let's get blood on back open here. <clears throat> All right, now when we first look at this, right? If we look at the, the green compared to the red, um, you know, everything looks in line, right? Because right here, we can see is where the green, where the SMA5, right, crossed below the SMA8, and it shifted from a long output to a short output right there. So historically, this, you know, this may look correct, but in real time, right it's actually not going to look correct so hopefully yeah it looks like our sma5 might be crossing below the red line here the sma8 pretty soon let's take a look all right one more bar and there we go um right so we still have a long output but right the fast the green line crossed below the red line so we should be getting a short output now right but we don't right so there you go so you can see in real time it's actually not correct and the problem is because we're having to wait three bars you know before we actually will see that cross below right because our displacement is set to three we're gonna have to wait three bars so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna set the displacement to zero so that way we can read the SMA5 immediately but we're also going to because we made an adjustment to this displacement, right? We subtracted three to get our displacement down to zero. So we're going to just uh, subtract three from this displacement, which knocks it down to two, right? And if you notice, right, um, the the output shifted a little bit here. <clears throat> so um, now we're going to have to wait. Yeah, we're probably going to have to wait a while before the fast moving average crosses up on the medium moving average. But in the editing part, we'll just fast forward through this part. All right. When this bar closes, we'll have a cross up. There we go. There's our, right? There's our cross up. And now we have a long output, <clears throat> right? So we, you know, so you can see that, you know, what you see historically doesn't always match what happens in real time, right? So when you're building a system, hopefully this impresses upon you that you do need to obviously, you know, watch your system and test, you know, each of the solver components, you know, uh, on in real time, you know, um, you know, especially when you're doing uh, displacements, right? So because then, yeah, once you start shifting things forward in time or even backwards in time, right, um, 
seeing things historically, you know, it's really hard to convert in your mind as to how they're going to play out in real time. So, so definitely do your due diligence, you know, and test, you know, uh, ideas like this, you know, test your components out. All right. So there's one, one, um, one of the requirements here, right? So that's the uh, five, SMA five above or below the SMA eight. So now <clears throat> let's do the SMA eight above and below the 13, right? And so to do that, let's go to our solvers tab and we can make a copy of the existing node that we already have. And let's rename this, All right? So comparing the eight to the 13, Right, there's the SMA8. And then let's see, let's shift our displacement to five. And let's change the period here. All right, and I, there, there are, I already changed the displacement to eight. All right, so there's our new solver there. And let's put this on the board. So let's go to existing nodes. And there we have it. All right, let's take a look. <clears throat> right. And so, you know, once again, when the red crosses the blue, right, it, it looks correct historically, you know, but if we watch this um, again, you know, if we watch this play out, there, shift that, right? We already know that we're going to have to wait, you know, at least five bars, you know, before the crossover, you know, of the moving averages actually shows up in Bloodhound. So again, we're going to, you know, uh, reduce the displacement, you know, down to zero for input A and adjust the displacement for input B, right? So... We'll adjust this down to zero, which means we subtracted five here. And so eight minus uh, five leaves us with three, right? So there we go. <clears throat> and so now when we look at this, right, here's our crossover, right? But we're getting the cross up way back here, right? And if you think about that, right, that's, well, you know, if everything shifted into the future, right, if you're watching these bars, right, into the future, this would be the bar that just closed, and here's our cross up into the future. And let's see where we're at. Yeah, it looks like market's in a good, strong uptrend right now, so it might take a while for... The red to cross below the blue line there so we'll just kind of skip waiting that out there all right and so let's finish completing this here and oh let me adjust these back here there we go like so so the next thing we need is an and node to combine these together like so just as you would with a standard kind of multi moving average, you know, ribbon type of system, right? You put plug everything into an AND node here. So, and essentially that is it. So here, here we have the fast cross below the blue. So let's take a look there. All right. Yeah. So already, so for two bars, the green has crossed below the red already for two bars. And you see we have two bars marked, you know, with the short output for that, that, you know, for the green being below the red there. And it looks like, yeah, our red is going to cross below the blue here pretty, pretty soon. So let's take a look at that. Oh, hmm. There we go. 
there is our red right below the blue now and now we have a short output right as it crossed below so there we go so now let's take a look and so now look at this the green line is actually above the blue line right but the green line is below the red line so because things are shifted forward in different amounts right we have a different number of bars that each moving average is shifted into the future so we actually need a third comparison we you know for a standard you know moving average ribbon system you only need to do you know the fast to the medium and the medium to the slow and maybe the slow to the extra slow right because everything everything's you know going to be lined up but because we have different amounts of shifting into the future going here we actually need to we need a third solver here where the we need to compare the SMA5 to the SMA13 here you know so as we saw right with right here we can see right here that you know the fast is actually above the slow but it is up below the medium right so that's you know so that's incorrect there um, and, and we could still get a short signal <clears throat> even though the green line is in the incorrect you know spot there so um, actually I'm sorry right there so all right so let's add let's go to our solver nodes here and let's make another comparison solver So comparing the five period to the 13 period. And let's see, the difference there is five, a five bar displacement difference, right? So the SMA five has a displacement of three. And so three subtract eight Right, or I'm sorry, eight subtract three means you know a five bar difference there. So there we go. So a displacement of zero and a displacement of five. Okay, so there's our extra check that we need, you know, because of all of these different you know uh, displacements that we're using. So let's go to the existing nodes. There's right the five compared to the thirteen. We'll just drop it in. And there we have it. Actually, yeah, see, you can see a short, um, all right, some short signals disappeared there once we connected that in. So there, disconnected, right? We had some, some false short signals here. Um, and then we connect that in, and that, that corrects everything now. Yeah, so there we go. So now we do have the fast above the medium and the fast is above the slow. All right, well that does it for the Bill Williams alligator system question here.